Um, I want to say welcome to everyone on this cold morning. I hope we will have lovely, warm Christian fellowship today around the world. I want to especially welcome all our St. James ladies and an even more special welcome to all our guests. Please also remember this doorcast that we're going to launch today for the first time. We want you to invite any friend that is a lady or a daughter or a, an older friend, but it is for women of, of anyway. We want to spend time together. So I'm going to explain a little bit of how the morning will work. First, I just want to show you who is part of this C4 ministry team. That's what we call in St. James, different outreaches we call ministry team. So in our team, we've got Anne. She's the head of our team. We've got Marty. There she is at sound. And we've got Marika. And she's on her way because she's making pancakes as fresh as you can get them today. So we'll see them later. <laughs> okay. So first, we are going to start off with live music. Thank you, Danai and Etienne. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
everybody. It's so lovely to have all of you here today. Thank you for being here, and thank you for that beautiful worship music. I actually got a bit tearful just listening to it, and I don't cry very easily. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, these beautiful women that are here today, Lord. We come to worship you, we come to praise you, Lord. We come to say thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives, Lord, for your hand over us every day. Thank you that you are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you that we can trust you with our lives, Lord. And we pray that this uh, meeting would uh, bring warm fellowship, help us to get to know one another better, and may, may your name be glorified in all that we do and say, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And then I'm going to read um, uh, today's reading. Uh, it's focused on Dorcas. It's from Acts 36, verse 43. Okay, it's coming up there. Okay, now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping, and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord, and he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, the tanner. This is the word of the Lord. So now we're going to do an activity, and after this activity you will understand why we chose the name Dorcas for this fellowship that is for ladies. So I'm going to ask Meredith and Cheryl and Dalian and Mariette, will you please give each lady one of these bags? While they're handing it out, I just want to say we were so blessed. Two days before, three days before we actually had this meeting, we were blessed with lots of goodies that's in that bag that you are receiving. And on if you receive the bag, on the bag you will see it says REACH Woman. So I'm quickly going to explain what this stands for. REACH is the, domina the domina denomination that we are part of, and it stands for Reformed Evangelical Anglican Church of Christ. So in this goodie bag, please find the activity. And there's also a pen. And then I'm quickly going to explain what we're going to do. Is there someone that was passed over with the goodie bags? Did everyone receive one? <laughs> it sounds like, what, what is normal? Pass over. <laughs> okay. So in the bag, there's lots of things you can go and have a look at at home, gifts, and then you'll also find the worksheet and a pen. But don't open it yet, because there's a competition involved in this. So I'm going to count down before we start. When, and can I tell them what happened when we practiced this? <laughs> I didn't even know that Auntie Anne was so competitive. 
<laughs> because I was still explaining and then she was already halfway done with it. So <laughs> just first listen and then I'm going to count you down. And there's three prizes involved in this activity. So it is in the form of a crossword puzzle. Um, you will need the reading that Anne just did. So um, do you have, Marty, did we bring the Bibles? Can we quickly fetch it? <laughs> Let me see who has the Bible app on their cell phone. Is, that, is, is there anyone that needs a Bible? Okay, can I give you my app? Or oh, Marty, can we, can we quickly go fetch just a few? Are you sure? You might be out of the competition, Geraldine, if you don't have your... Perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so is everyone sorted? You've got your Bible, you've got your pen. Okay, let me explain. If you look on the first page, you will see the questions. That is all from that scripture. Please use the ESV. That's the one that we also read in church. And then, if you turn the page, you will see a crossword puzzle that looks like this. And uh, once you've filled all the answers, use the color code to fill this last line there. Once, you've, once you have the answer in the colored blocks, stand up and shout whatever is written there. The first three ladies that does that will receive this lovely prize. Over there. So let me count you down. Are you ready? Three. <laughs> Talene is also competitive. Three. Three, two, one, go. Let's see. What clothing item did Dorka make for the widows? One across. It was? Tunics. Two across. Who did the disciples call to come and help? Peter. In what town did Dorka stay? Joppa. What was Simon's occupation? He was a tanner. What is another name for Dorcas? Me. Did I make a mistake? Tabita. <laughs> and with who? <laughs> with, with who did Peter stay in Joppa? Simon. What? This is important. What did the widows show Peter? Garments. And this one also. This is the most important one. What did Peter do after he put everyone outside? Pray. He prayed. Thank you. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> and on that note, I'm calling Marty. So, morning, ladies. Um, oh, it's such a privilege. Um, I'm so happy that we could gather today and just be ladies together and look at this wonderful disciple of Jesus and look at her life and see 
what we can take from her life to apply to our own lives and um, to be better disciples of Jesus Christ. So um, you've now heard the story. You've actually done a little bit of exercise on it. I wanted to ask you guys, what lessons do you, could you name that we can take from the life and death of Dorcas to apply to our own lives? So any ideas? for lessons that we can take from this story. Yes. Yes. That's perfect. Being skillful and using our our skills to 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 help people to it's our responsibility to use those skills that God gave us. Yes, Ina. To talents, yes. Use our talents. That's great. Exactly, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> my my dad always says precisely. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> that's ex- that's exactly it. Another one. What do you guys think? Exactly. She was faithful. She she kept doing good, like you just said. She kept loving people. All right. Anything else? I thought of one, but I don't know. <laughs> I thought, hmm, what would have happened if Dorcas didn't know Peter? So, it's all about who you know in life. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's about contact. But <laughs> then I thought, no, you know what? It is about that. But she knew, she knew Jesus. She knew the man from Galilee. She knew Jesus of Nazareth, and that's what raised her back to life. That's what made her life mean something. Okay, so thank you very much. You can go to the next slide, Tony. Okay, so that's, that's very small for me, but I think, I hope you guys can see. So the first one, like Marcel um, said, <laughs> is I said to use, to use our gifts um, to help other people. And I got this from Acts 9 verse 36. So let's just read it together. It says, Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. And then, this is also, in many places in scriptures, we get the same command to use the talents that God has given us to help others. Especially here in Matthew 5, verse 14 to 19, where it says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And ladies, this is the, what I think must be the motive of our good works, is to let it be seen and let it glorify God. Let people say thank you to God for this person that has done this thing for me. Or this person who is so talented, like Etienne and Danae now, who sang, and they used their talents for God. Um, and a year at St. James, um, I think most of you ladies are from St. James, but we, of course, have our C4 ministries. So um, outside you will see there's a little pamphlet like this if you uh, want to still know about it. Um, and this, the four C's that basically stands for um, connect, continue, commit, and uh, communicate. <laughs> Thank you, Sonal. Sonal, by the way, <laughs> had the plan to put this whole system in place. And um, on there, there's a few circles, and this is basically how we want to use all our talents here in, in church to help each other. We, of course, we have the green fingers, we have the pantry, we have the toolbox guys, and it could also be girls. So um, that's how we use it in church. But If you're not even from St. James, you know what you are good at. You know that maybe you're good at biking. Maybe you're good with children. Maybe you have time. Do that little thing for somebody else. Do that uh, babysit for a bit so that they can have a date night. (laughs) Yes, make a meal. I I can't explain to you 
how much it means if somebody invites me over for lunch in a busy day and they say, you can literally just come sit, eat, go, but please come. That means, that means the world to me. And um, yeah, so I want us to learn this or to take this from the life of talkers, to really make, make a serious business of using our talents for God's honor. Okay, then you can go to the next time, Tani. Then secondly, um, I think you ladies, Tani Geraldine, you said it. She was consistent. Okay, she stayed faithful in doing good to others. Um, if you read uh, this verse, verse 39, it says, All the widows stood beside him, that's Peter, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. So when I read this, it didn't seem to me like it was a one-time thing. It didn't seem like um, she did it, I don't know, once on an outreach and then never carried on with it. She made caring a habit and she was faithful in it until the very end, until she died. And that she, she actually became very well known throughout the whole region for this. So that is one thing that we can also learn from her is to make caring a habit, to persevere in this, to let our lives be a, a living sacrifice for God. Um, let's look at some other verses that also confirm this. Firstly, there's Second Thessalonians, Thessalonians 3 verse 13. It says, as for you, brothers and sisters, and I love that they added sisters, uh, never tire of doing what is good. Galatians 6 verse 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't, do not give up. So ladies, I really truly hope that each of us will make, a serious, uh, make it a serious thing to use our talents and then pray that we all persevere in doing that. Thank you, Tani. <laughs> then thirdly, she built relationships that had lasting impact. And we can see this once again in the same verse where the widows and all of them stood beside her, uh, beside Peter, weeping. Okay, so um, as humans, of course, we were created as relational beings. And I know some feel more relational than others. And I used to be somebody that wasn't very relational. Um, but we were created to be relational because God is relational. If we think of our God, he's a triune God. He's Father, God, and Son. And they are Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they are in perfect relation with each other. And so he made us in his image to be in perfect relationship, firstly with him, then with other people, also with creation, and with ourselves, with our, with our own, the way we think about ourselves. And unfortunately, due to sin and the fall of man, these relationships were severed. First, of course, we know our relationship with God was severed, but also our relationship with creation. Look what we are doing to the planet. Look how some people treat animals. Then also, of course, our relationship with others. I mean, you can just read one, one thing in the news and be depressed. <laughs> and then also with ourselves. We either think too highly of ourselves or too lowly of ourselves. But this is the good news, that if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe that a man from Nazareth walked this earth, he, was, he wore sandals and he, um, he had dust on his feet, and he walked this earth and he lived a perfect life for us, had no sin, he was obedient to his Father, even to the cross, where he died and took our place for sins, then you are in God a new creation. Then your, your um, relationship with God has been reconciled through Jesus. Then we are the first fruits of his new kingdom. We are the, the children, the first people in his new kingdom. And he's bringing his kingdom here to, here to earth. As he is renewing us, he's bringing his kingdom to earth. And we should be examples of that first fruit. So in our relationships with others, we should be an example of what a a reconciled relation, what a deep relationship looks like. So even today, if you see a few ladies that you've never seen before, please reach out to them and um, go and talk to them, even now in the little time we have. And um, something that I'm really working on is to listen well. Try to know this person. Try to not um, give as much of yourself, but thou 
all of us are going to listen and then, but try to get to know this person and really for this five minutes get a bit deeper than the usual topical things we only always talk about we talk about uh, the weather and um, just how's the kids but what if you ask how's your heart how how how's your prayer life just i know and i know that's uncomfortable for us but that's what i think Dorcas did she had deep relationships because if she if if they weren't deep they wouldn't have had lasting impact on these guys all right and then the last one tani you can go on it's to let uh, god use us to witness to others so if we look at this life of this lady and it's to me it's so striking that in a few verses i think it's six verses you get this whole story that means so much you get this story of a person who not only served god in her life but even when she died and was resurrected that pointed more directly to jesus and to his power how wonderful is that and i really hope that all our lives can be like that that our living and our dying our sickness and our health our abundance and our destitute all point to jesus let him use us to witness to him so um what stood out to me here in in acts verse 9 uh, acts 9 verse 40 to 42 is that last sentence and it became known throughout all joppa and many believed in the lord and it became known through all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. That's just wonderful to me. And then in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20, it says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, <coughs> as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So, ladies, I hope that whatever we are going through we're always ready to give an answer for the hope that is in us okay and that's basically the four that i got um i wonder if i can just pray for us um, and just close okay. dear heavenly father we thank you for the life of this lady uh, we thank you that you put it in the bible lord and that it means so much to us as ladies Lord, I ask that you help us in this life to take these lessons from Dorcas' life and apply it, Lord. Help us to make it serious to use our talents. Help us to be faithful in that and persevere in that. Lord, help us to build relationships that have lasting impact on others and on ourselves, Lord. Lord, and I pray that you would use each and every lady here each and every mother, sister, grandmother, daughter, use us all for your glory, Lord. Raise up a womanhood in this, in this town, Lord, in this city, that will be, bring your name glory and bring you praise, Lord. Lord, let us, let us be good helps to our husbands. Let us be good sisters. Let us be obedient and daughters that makes our, make our parents proud and that care for them, Lord. Lord, help us to be good, good, good mothers and to follow your will in that, Lord. Lord, and help us to be good workers and good daughters, Lord. We need you in all of this, Lord. And we, we come here today as ladies and we, we bow ourselves before you and we ask this all in the name of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Good morning. I haven't been um, here at all ever before, so... <laughs> but yeah, um, we'd love to share some of this information that you just received from us. Um, so we um, have a form that you can complete if you haven't completed it yet. It's in the foyer. Um, just your name, email address, contact numbers, if you would like to know a little bit more of Dorcas and that what we've, we've just um, read about and heard about. Dorcas is really such an amazing woman. <laughs> you know, all of us can strive to be more like her, I think. All right, so um, also, um, if you'd like some more information with regard to this fellowship, this Dorcas Fellowship, 
are more than welcome to um, either talk to um, me and Sanel Marti, and um, also we'd like some more help. So if you, if you feel um, so inclined, you are more than welcome to to just please uh, just contact us and say you know I want to be part of this and in whichever way we'd like we'd like some more help and plans etc. Okay. Um, and then our next fellowship gathering of this sort, the Dorcas meeting, will be on the 15th of October. Okay, so it's once every quarter. Okay, so it's not every Saturday, so um, you are more than welcome to help once a quarter. Okay, <laughs> and like Marty also said, really, absolutely every woman is more than welcome to attend. They don't have to be from this church. They can be from another church. They don't have to even attend a church. Bring women. It's fellowship around the word um, with regard to women that can live for God and do something for the community so that someone can see God do in their works. Okay. So even if you think um, a young girl can come and sit through this, more than welcome. Okay, so, and then um, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them. Also, once again, me, Marty, Sanel, Anne, okay? And then we have some lovely eats, treats and everything. I see it's already here in the foyer. Um, there will be pancakes, and I see there's cupcakes, tea, coffee. So please don't just run away. Fellowship and chat and talk and... Um, make some time for each other to get to know each other a little better.